morning everyone. Today I'm going to show you a different version of my steak recipe. My daughter Amanda came up with this fantastic recipe and she calls it a roast. So here we go. I'm going to share it with you guys. We're going to start off with one cup of vital wheat gluten and it is very tasty and when you see what the twist is You'll be so surprised. When I say it's good, it's good. She made sandwiches for us and she made her own barbecue sauce, which I'm gonna have to ask her if she wants to share that. And it was just delicious. So here we go. We have one cup of vital wheat gluten. And knowing me, I always add just a little extra. Just gonna put just a tad extra. And if I need more later, I will add it. So, like I said, this is almost like my recipe, but not quite. Here we go. So we have the one cup of vital wheat gluten. We're gonna need our two pinches of sage. And two pinches of sage will be approximately about one eighth of a teaspoon. So two pinches of sage, we're going to put, instead of putting a whole package of, uh, here we go, I'm using the uh, rapid, rapid yeast. This is, a, this is the yeast that you use when you make bread or pizza, but instead of using a package, which is approximately about two and a half, I think, of teaspoons, I am just going to use one teaspoon of the yeast that she added to her, to the, uh, that she changed from my recipe. Uh, we will put the mushroom powder and that would be one tablespoon of mushroom powder. I hope I have enough because I'm on the last bit in my container here. So I have to make some more. And remember what I told you guys, if you don't or can't find mushroom powder, just buy dried mushrooms that you could get at any Asian market. Any mushroom that you see there that's dry, take them home and just put them in your blender and this is what you're going to get. You're going to get the finest, oops, I just put a little too much, it doesn't matter. Uh, you will get the finest powder, mushroom powder ever and it's fantastic because I use it on almost all my recipes that I make my seitan because it gives it that nice earthy taste that you find in meat. A lot of people that used to eat meat remember that meat had this earthy taste to it, the iron, the minerals. So it's going to, because it has all the minerals, it's going to give it that nice earthy taste that you want in your seitan. And this is not going to be a steak, but it's going to be a nice little roast that you're going to have and serve you can serve it with gravy you can make sandwiches uh, sandwiches with it it's just fantastic okay so we put the mushrooms now we're going to again use the chickpea flour now if you're not going to use any of this you're going to get a very dense rubber like feel with your seitan and that's something that you don't want you want to be able to bite into your seitan and have a nice bite and chew so this is what the chickpea and the mushroom does it actually just um, adds a nice tenderness to it. So we're going to put one tablespoon of this. And this is chickpea powder that I'm using. You could also get uh, lentil and you can make your own or you could also make your own chickpea powder. If you have a good, um, if you have a good high speed blender, you could probably get a nice fine powder. If not, you can pass it. And then just keep blending those little bits till it turns into a fine powder. But today you can find this at any store. Now we're going to get some nutritional yeast. And we're going to add two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. That's one. And that's two. Okay, so now we're going to put just a little pinch of salt which is really not eat it, needed because you can add that later on. But I'm just going to put a tiny, tiny little bit. That's about maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. 
Okay, we want to mix this up really good because now we're going to start putting some wet ingredients. And if you do put wet ingredients before you mix your uh, your mixture, uh, you're gonna it's not going to be distributed evenly. So what we want to do is mix it up really good, and then we're going to add the wet stuff. Okay, so here we go. Now we're going to add to this uh, some soy sauce. Wow, look at that. Talk about draining the bottle. Exactly one eight. And I'm not kidding you. It just, I emptied out the bottle. <laughs> okay, and now we're going to add our tablespoon of olive oil, or you just can give it one twist around. But I'm just going to put one tablespoon of olive oil. And you ready for this, guys? Do you see what that is? It's my homemade spaghetti sauce. And I think I have a little piece of my seitan meat in there, which I'm going to eat. That is what she uses to make her delicious roast. Thank you, Amanda, for sharing this with us. Now, if you want to follow my daughter, she hasn't had time lately because she's also a writer and she is in the midst of writing her book and so she hasn't had time to make YouTube videos but if you do want to follow her she does have some videos up and she goes under my so-called vegan life and I will share a link with you guys so now if you have any sauce left, any spaghetti sauce, put a cup of it aside and try making this because it's really good. Now, I haven't tried it with any store-bought spaghetti sauce um, at the store because we don't buy it. Uh, but if you are someone who doesn't make your own spaghetti sauce and you want to give it a go, you, I guess you can try a store-bought spaghetti sauce. But if you do make some yourself, I would say put some aside about a cup to a cup and a half and then give this a try and I'm telling you this is really really good so I'm gonna mix this up for you guys there we go and one of these days I have to put up my meatball recipe because that is something else altogether There we go. So I'm just going to use my hands now. They are washed. And we're going to just mix this all up. If I need a little extra, which I do, I'm going to put a little extra gluten because I want this to be nice and firm, but not too firm either. I'm just going to put some onto the board. Oop, sorry guys. It never fails, right? I'm always giving you guys a good shake. Okay, here we go. And I'm sorry, I know someone came on one time and told me I shouldn't be using my hands, but I'm Italian. And we that's what we use best is our hands. And my hands are always washed. Okay, now you're going to see that when you're mixing this, it's going to feel a little different than when you use water. It really has a different feel to your, um, to your gluten. But I'm just going to keep adding a little bit of gluten just to, I would say, another oh God, espresso cup. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, but that's how I usually measure my stuff. And it's not that I measure it that way. It's because I have it here. I'll show you what I mean. Here's my bin and this fits so nicely in here. So when I need stuff, I grab this because it fits perfect in there. Because if I try and shove my cup 
my measuring cup in there it just does not fit right so I keep this and then I just got used to measuring with that cup and last time if I'm not mistaken I think I used three of those gave me a cup so I kind of use that as a guide okay so here we go now we're gonna put this down and we're just gonna let it rest and remember, gluten, the more you knead it, the more it, the gluten forms. Okay, I'm just going to put a dab of oil. There we go. And I'm going to put my little roast and I'm just going to let it rest for at least half hour. So I'll see you in a bit. But meanwhile, I'll show you, you know what, I'm just going to push this aside and I'm going to show you in my pot, here we go, this is my seitan pot, it's an old pot, but I love it. I put in here garlic, bay leaves, I put about two, three bay leaves, I put a handful of garlic and I don't take away the skin because it doesn't go into my roast. And it's just easier for me to just break the uh, the garlic apart rather than trying to take off that, that skin because you will get the flavor even though it has the skin on there. So I put about six cups of water. I put uh, four cloves of garlic. I put about a tablespoon of olive oil. You could put a little more if you want to. I put about a quarter cup of soy sauce. I put two tablespoons of paprika. I put uh, a couple of leaves of bay leaves, uh, a large pinch of sage, a large pinch of nutmeg, and I will write it. If you go look right around there, you're going to see the list of ingredients that you need. And now I'm going to just squeeze half a lime. And I'm just going to put the whole lime into the pot and this I'm gonna put now while that's here we go I'm just gonna give it a squeeze and there goes my lime now I'm gonna put this onto the stove and I'm gonna start simmering this now because when this has been rested it's gonna be perfect my water is gonna be hot enough for me to put my roast into so I'm gonna put this on the stove I'm gonna cover that water or that broth and I'm gonna put this aside and I'm gonna cover this and I'm gonna let this uh, sit and uh, do its thing because we did put the yeast. Now, the yeast that I put in there, I put nutritional yeast and I put the yeast that you use when you make bread or if you're making pizza. Now, that's the yeast that gives this a slight taste difference and that is why we use it. Now, a lot of people are going to notice that it's going to blow up on you, but that's okay. You could just let it sit after it's cooked, let it sit, and the water will slowly come out of it. The best thing about seitan is the day after. You can still eat it the same day, but the day after is when your seitan is at its best. You can slice it, you can reheat it, you can do whatever you want with it, but Okay, so while the water is uh, simmering, uh, the broth, I'm going to leave this aside and I'm going to let it do its thing. But for now, it's going to rest for at least 20 to 60 minutes. So I'm going to see you in a little bit. Okay, so here we go. I have it in the water. So I'm just going to let this simmer and this is going to simmer on a low heat and I'm going to simmer this for at least 60 minutes. So that's going to reduce and it's just going to slowly simmer on its own. I lower the heat to a low and just let it do its thing for one hour. Once in a while I just come and just move it around just to make sure it didn't stick or flip it over and just let it do its thing. So I'm going to see you in an hour. And I am going to put it into a pan with a little bit of rosemary and olive oil. And I am going to fry her up. 
and I'm going to show you that in an hour. So I'll see you then. Okay, so we're back, and I went and get some beautiful rosemary in my garden, and I'm going to put olive oil in my pan, and I'm going to cook up this meat. It's already cooked, but I am going to put, uh, I'm going to wait to put the rosemary because I don't want to burn it, but I'm going to put some steak spice, always with the steak spice. Now you could either buy Montreal steak spice or you could check. I have a recipe on how I make my own. So I'm going to put a little bit of steak spice and here's my beautiful roast. And I have my gardeners out there so I've got to say sorry for all this noise. And we're going to cook this up and we're going to get it nice and crispy on the outside. And then we're going to add some rosemary to add some extra flavor to it. But I want to crush a garlic. So if you wait, I'm just going to get a garlic. There you go. And we're not going to cook this on high. We're going to cook this on a medium heat. And what we're doing is we're sealing all the juices of the meat inside. So I'm just going to add some garlic. And we're just going to sear it. And then what you could do is just keep this in a container, in a Tupperware container. You're going to keep it in the refrigerator. And you could either cut it for uh, sandwiches or if you want to also make a little syrup raw, you could take pieces of it. Or just make it into a roast where you're going to cut slices and you could top it with some gravy. And just slowly... Flip it over. Now the bottom side isn't as pretty as the top side, but it really doesn't matter because when it goes into your belly, it makes no difference. We're just going to flip it over. I lost a little bit of garlic there, but that's all right. And now I'm going to put some rosemary. Now you could either put it whole or you can just cut it into smaller pieces and don't be afraid of the oil because this is really just to encase all the flavors and I wish you can smell this if you have in the future where you can actually smell what's going on in the kitchen because this is like crazy good just keep browning the outside. This is not going to dry up your meat. If anything, it's just going to uh, encase all those juices because I'm doing this right after it came out of the, uh, the broth. I did not wait for it to sit. I just took the, uh, the meat out of the broth and now I'm frying it up. And just touch the sides of the pan to get that golden too. And just keep getting nice and golden. If you find it's just taking too long, jack up the heat at the end. And just keep frying that up. And you're going to get a nice little crust on the outside. And it's going to stay nice and soft and moist on the inside. So here we are. I'm going to get a nice beer out of the refrigerator and I'm going to add some beer to this while it's cooking on the outside. And I'll show you in a bit. So yesterday was my husband's birthday and we picked up some Italian beer for him. But I mean you can use whatever beer you have in the house. But I'm going to use this one. This smells so good. There you go. We're just going to lower the heat. And just let this drink it up. So here we go. We're going to just add some more beer. And we're just going to let this meat drink it up. And this is going to stay nice and golden. So I'm just going to pour some of these liquids on top. 
So I'm just going to let this drink up the juices. And this is how simple it is to make this wonderful roast. So Thanksgiving is coming. This is a nice dish you can make um, if you're using the stuffing and putting the stuffing on the side. But if I have the chance, I'm going to show you how I make my stuffed seitan for Thanksgiving. And show you how easy it really is to make a nice roast. And you can stuff it with your favorite uh, Thanksgiving stuffing. And I do make a traditional one without the giblets though. What I do is I make a nice um, coconut bacon that I throw in in my stuffing. And you know what? You'd never know that it wasn't real bacon. So here's my beautiful roast. And this is the roast that my daughter makes. And it's the same as my steak recipe, except we took it a step further and we used spaghetti sauce instead of the water. So here we go. It's all done. Now you can refrigerate this and um, use it for sandwiches the day after. Or you can simply just cut it up and make it for dinner with a nice side of potatoes. So I'll show you what the finished product looks like. Okay, so here it is guys, and it's uh, ready to be either served, or you can cool this off and make sandwiches the day after, but it's really that simple, that easy, and it smells amazing. So, I hope you like this recipe, and if you do, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next.